What's up everyone and welcome back to another edition of DIY Box where the best TV box is the one you build yourself. In my last video I promised to return to the Quijadas of Vim4 SBC board with an update on its case and a new firmware update granting new features that would allow us to use it as a full-fledged Android TV box. The Vim4 is currently ranked at a number 4 on my ranking chart and it features the new Amlogic A311 D2 octa-core chipset clocked at 2.2GHz with amazing high-end performance. However, it came only with the mainboard, a cooling fan and heatsink, and its firmware lacked essential features that would have allowed us Android Box users to use it as a full-fledged TV box. So in this review with the assistance of today's sponsor, I'm here to complete my DIY project and present to you one of the best high performance Android boxes you can assemble for yourself and do away with those shabby low performance Android boxes that could never seem to get anything right. So don't go anywhere, you have that right after this. Today's video is sponsored in part by KKSB, the number one supplier of mini ITX cases. They stock a wider range of cases and enclosures for top name brands such as Kehadas, Odroid, Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi and more. They provide both aluminum and plastic cases and they can custom design to any SBC board in the industry. So if you're looking for the right case to complement your DIY project, check out their website at kksb-cases.com or see the link in the description below this video. Welcome back. So this is the Kehadas Vim4 SBC board and I've already completed a full in-depth review featuring its Android 11 operating system, its high performance 3D gaming and emulation gaming, its advanced active cooling features and its high performance benchmarks and a link to that video can be found in the description directly below. However, as you can see, you can't use this as an Android TV box sitting next to your TV looking like this as it needs a proper case that will provide access to its I.O. ports while at the same time providing advanced cooling for its high-end chipset during long hours of usage such as watching movies and TV shows and high-performance Android gaming. This is where KKSB comes in. This is their latest Vim4 aluminum case designed using a passive cooling heating design for quiet yet effective cooling. The Vim4 comes with a cooling fan and heatsink of its own and there is also a single heatsink you can purchase separately. However, to use this case you will have to remove all stock cooling as it comes with its own built-in heatsink that occupies the entire surface of the case. It also comes with its own heat pad and screws. So I'll quickly install the board into this new case and have a look at the finished product. Firstly, I'll start by removing its stock cooling fan and heatsink. Next, there are three buttons in the pack that you need to place into the allocated slots before installing the board. Before inserting the board, you need to apply the thermal pad onto the elevated square block and remember to remove the plastic on both sides. Then carefully insert the board ensuring that the buttons don't fall out of their slots and the board's connecting ports fit into the slots correctly. The final step is to install the button panel. Insert the screws and hand tighten them. Once completed, stick the anti skid rubber feet onto the bottom panel. However, please note, don't try to stick them onto the screws like I am doing. Find flat sections close to the edges and apply them evenly. So this is my finished product and the KKSB aluminum case fits beautifully with the exception of one issue. Firstly, to its rear, you can access its USB ports, HDMI port, LAN port, microSD card slot and its Type-C port. 
to the front you can access its micro hdmi input and you have its power led along with its mipi serial display connectors to its right side you have your power recovery and reset buttons at the top, the entire surface is its heatsink and you have a cutout for its GPIO header. At the bottom, you have cutouts for wall mounting and some cooling vents. And the issue I have with this case is that they did not include a slot to insert your NVMe M.2 SSD. So now that it's ready and equipped to sit next to your TV or monitor to assume the role of an Android TV box, it's not yet quite ready to perform that function given the cons in my first video. In my first video, its firmware was only available in 32-bit mode. It had no root access. It had no Google Play Store or Google Play services. No screen mirroring function due to the lack of Play services. It could not play any 4K HDR videos or surround sound audio due to a decoder issue. It did not have any digital rights to play paid subscription services in HDR 4K. And Android gaming and gamepad key mapping was not possible due to the lack of Play services and root access. That was in August 2022. Since then, they have released two versions of the 64-bit version of Android 11, Core Alec and Ubuntu. However, in my case, I'm only interested in the 64-bit version of Android seeing that my goal is to apply this SVC as an Android streaming TV box. So I'll now install the latest 64-bit version of Android 11 and let's see what improvements or changes were made. So this is the new Android 11 64-bit operating system and you can check that information here under its firmware build information. All its launcher and firmware features remain the same, so I'll only focus on what features has changed. Let's first head over to its system and hardware information. Now that we have 64-bit architecture, it can now run both 32 and 64-bit apps and games and its Amlogic H311D2 CPU is still clocked at 2.2 GHz. Under Codex, it now comes with Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision decoders that were missing under the 32-bit version. In this new update, you now have access to the Google Play Store and Google Play services. However, there are some apps and games that are stating that they cannot run on this firmware, but when you sideload them, they run perfectly accessing all Google Play services and features. It appears that they used the Pico version of OpenGaps instead of the full version. One of the features that has not changed is its DRM information. Here it still shows that it has wide vinyl of a tree with no HDCP protection. This means that premium paid subscription services will be limited to 480p resolution even if you have an HD or 4K account. And for root access, one of the features crucial to your Android TV box experience, after the update it now shows that you have root access. However, there is no root switch in the developer options. In the previous 32-bit firmware, you had no access to YouTube because there were no Google Play services. Now you can play both YouTube or mobile version and Android TV version in 4K 2160p with HDR. You can change its wallpaper using a custom image, however, live wallpapers do not work. This latest firmware does not include the official version of Miracast, but you can use the AirScreen app to mirror or cast your mobile devices. A critical feature in this latest release is its ability to play self-hosted 4K HDR10+, AV1 and Dolby Vision videos. Using the Nexus version of the Kodi Media Player, this is a 4K HDR10 Plus video sample. Next, this is a 4K AV1 video sample. This is an HLG video sample.
and this is a Dolby Vision video sample. So the question usually is, which formats gets triggered on your TV? So running on this latest version, it triggers the HDR10 Plus and HLG. It does not trigger the Dolby Vision feature. Now here is one area where they have not yet completed and that is its surround sound audio output. They have indeed included all of the decoders to play Dolby and DTS audio. However, when connected to my AV receiver, it could not produce Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Surround, Dolby True HD, DTS HD Master Audio or DTS X. All that it could produce is DTS Neural X. So high performance gaming is now possible with the availability of Google Play services and root access, you can now take advantage of its high performance CPU and GPU with gamepad key mapping working perfectly. Target's in sight. Contact with enemy. We've taken the lead. Enemy in sight. Changing mag. Enemy contact. Enemy in sight. Job done tonight. Look at LeBron James. He's really been playing well. Right side Bradley. Green. Nailed from three-point land. And that's another assist for a team that is putting on a clinic on how to share the ball. Here's Ande Tacumbo. Pass to Lopez. Rudzo. So each of these games played on the highest graphics settings without throttling and those that required a touchscreen function, gamepad or keyboard and mouse key mapping worked perfectly. I attempted emulation gaming but was unsuccessful because Kehadas did not allow editing of root files in this firmware. So copying or loading of ROM ISO files to the Aether SX2 directory was denied. And finally, 
a change from 32-bit to 64-bit means you have improved performance and it was reflected on the Antutu benchmark with a score of 256,113. And with this score, it still stands at position number 4 on my rankings chart. In summary, now that I've completed the assembly of my DIY Android TV Box project using the only keys available from KKSB along with the latest Android 11 64-bit firmware from Kehadas, there are definitely some pros and cons that you should take note of. Firstly, there is no denying that with the Amlogic H11 D2 octa-core CPU, you have superior hardware performance to stream movies and TV shows, 4K video playback and Android gaming on the highest graphics level. However, it does inherit some of the challenges seen in your standard models. For instance, in this firmware, they have used the limited version of the Android Play Store, so there are some apps and games that are not available. It has root access, but it's not 100% rooted, as there are some files that you cannot access. You cannot apply live wallpapers. You don't get DRM support to play paid subscription services in HD and 4K, so you are limited to 480p. Even though the board has all the required recorders to play surround sound audio, it still cannot produce Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Surround, Dolby True HD, DTS HD Master Audio or DTSX. The good news is this is Kehadas and they are a professional SBC manufacturer, so they will look at these issues and work on fixes in the next firmware release. So that brings to an end another episode of DIY Box. This is not the last you have seen of the Vim 4 as there is still the active cooling case that can accommodate its cooling fan and we look forward to another firmware release to fix the cons highlighted in this video. Special thanks to KKSB Cases for sponsoring today's video and if you are into SPC boards then be sure to check out their wide range of cases to suit your project. See the links to the Vim 4 case on their website and on Amazon in the description below. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed this presentation. If you would like to get your hands on this Vim4 SBC board, you can do so using the link in the description below this video where you can get it at the lowest price. If this is the first time viewing one of my videos, then do me a favor and click that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell before leaving to keep in the loop as to when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.